The other thing that people get confused about, I think, is the bank feeds. And we'll talk more about bank feeds in a future section or a course. But uh, let's just think about when the bank feeds might be useful and how you might set up a, a system. It's usually the, the revenue cycle that gets a little bit confusing with the bank feeds. So let's talk about it first. There's a couple different ways we might set up our revenue cycle and it'll be dependent on the industry as we've seen in the past. We might, for example, have gig work. The easiest thing would be that we have like, we're just getting paid by YouTube or something. And we wait till it comes through the system. We add it to our books using the bank feeds. We get the information actually from the bank in that way. And we might use a deposit form. In that case, we're actually constructing our books from the bank. So there's not gonna be any timing differences that way because I, I didn't enter the revenue on my side. I just waited till it cleared the bank and then recorded it. It's still important to do a bank reconciliation, but the bank reconciliation will be super easy and you can verify your cash account in real time because it should tie out to what's on the bank statement or your running bank balance because you're creating your books from the bank statement. But that's not usually what people do. You can only do that if you're in a certain industry where that's something you can do. Like if you're at a cash register, for example, and you're collecting cash from clients, you can't just put the cash uh, directly into the into the to the bank. You're using now a sales form. So once you use the sales form at the cash register, you're going to want to check your cash to what you actually have in the cash register. You're going to compile all your cash together, and usually you're going to have to put it into that clearing account, undeposited funds or funds to deposit, and then deposit it into the bank as one lump sum. So in that case, you can't, for, for internal control purposes, you can't just wait till you get all the money that you collected in the day and then deposit into the bank and then wait till the bank clears your cash to record it as a deposit in your system because you want to record the sales as you make the sales and have the records of recording the sales, possibly the customer names if you're collecting that, but at least the individual sales that were made, you want to double check what's in your register to what's on the sales receipt for the day. And so therefore you, you can't really do that. You're going to enter them into your system uh, first, and then you're going to deposit it usually into the bank yourself, right? And then you're going to use the bank feeds if the bank feeds are on to double check, to verify. So now you have, you've entered it on your side, the bank is gonna enter it on their side and you could use the bank feed to double check. It'll be the matching thing, but the bank feed's not gonna record a new transaction generally in that case. And the bank feeds are helping you to reconcile now. So they're, you're not actually constructing your books from the bank, you're, you're, you're using the bank as a double check. That's what a reconciliation in a full service accounting system is designed to do. The bank should be doing your books on their side. You're doing your books on your side. You're double checking the two. The fact that you have two people doing the books and they reconcile, they're the same, except for timing differences, outstanding checks and deposits means that you have a double check and outside check that everything's going right. If you, if you have a full service accounting system where you have to bill the client, then you've got an accrual component. You've got accounts receivable no cash impacted by this transaction, although you're recording the revenue, then you're gonna receive the payment. Now you've got the cash. And then oftentimes you might then have to do the last step of depositing as we've been doing in the practice problem. And again, in that case, you're not gonna wait till the deposit clears the bank in order to track when you're gonna record revenue and, and usually when you're gonna record the deposit on your side, because you have, you have to enter the invoice in order to track the accounts receivable. So you see, you, you can't just make, you can't just make your books from the bank feed in that case, because you're required due to the type of industry you're in to invoice first and then receive the payment. And then you're gonna use the bank feeds normally to double check uh, the money that you've received. Now you could use bank feeds to kind of try to match to an invoice or, or any part, any node in the process here. We'll talk more about that when we get into the bank feed section or course, but that's the, that's the general idea. It's really only that really simple business where you're getting paid by a platform that you can just build your books from the bank feeds. Now on the vendor side, many businesses might be in a situation where they can basically construct their books from the bank feeds. 
because it used to be that we wrote checks. We wrote checks and checks take a long time to clear. We write a check, we send the check out. We want to be able to verify if someone has an issue with the money that we paid them, whether or not we wrote the check, number one. And then number two, did it clear? Has it cleared the bank? So there's gonna be a big timing difference between when we write the check and when the check clears, because it has to be gotten by the other person and then deposited and then clear. So if you're writing checks, you certainly want to enter the checks into your system so that you can track the unclear checks and you've got to do a bank reconciliation process to do that. But a lot of businesses, small businesses in particular, are going to do a lot of, you know, electronic, many all business are going to do a lot of electronic transfers. And if you're doing electronic transfers, you don't have this big timing difference. So possibly in that case, you're just going to, you're just going to set up automatic wire transfers for your telephone, your utilities and whatnot, and all that kind of stuff. And instead of you entering into the system as a check or expense form, when you pay the bill, you're just going to wait till it clears the bank and then record it with an expense or check type form as it clears the bank using the bank feeds. So in a similar way as the deposit situation down here, we would therefore be constructing our books from the bank we're not doing the double and we're not we're not double checking our books we're just building our books from the bank therefore we're not going to have any differences from the bank therefore we can we can still think of a bank reconciliation but it will be a quite easy bank reconciliation because our balance should match what's on the bank side of things because we're constructing our balance from the bank but if you're in a, as larger companies usually then often will want to enter bills into the system so they, they can track when they're going to pay the bill and try to pay it as late as possible. Now you're entering an accrual component into the system. And therefore, it's going to it's going to complicate. You're going to have a full service accounting system where you're going to have to track the bill. And then you're usually going to going to make the payment. And then when you pay the bill and then you're going to use possibly the bank reconciliations to verify to match, not to record anything but to double check the recording, the bank reconciliations therefore being part of, uh, or the bank, the bank feeds being part of the bank reconciliation process. So that's, that's, uh, that's going to be the general idea with those two, those two kind of components that I think people get confused on. Now, just in terms of when the bank reconciliation happens, if you're working in real time, typically you're going to enter the data for January, you're going to get the actual bank statement sometime in february now a lot of people because we, we got online banking and everything they want to just just go online and just print out something from their online banking to do the bank reconciliation you don't usually want to do that because the bank statement has the a very solid line of this is where we stopped last time this is where we were at and this is where we're at as of the end of the month so they've the very well delineated time frames so that we can see where we stand as of a point in time. If you just print out the data as it flows through your statement, you don't have that, that defined delineation. It's gonna be difficult to reconcile. So you wanna actually, the bank statements are useful for the bank reconciliation process. So you're gonna get something like this. This is just a mock bank reconciliation. And, and then so that, we can, so that we can compare it. So obviously we're gonna get the bank reconciliation for January in some time in February. And then we can use that to, to compare to, to the January data and reconcile uh, the system. And then in February, we'll get the bank statement sometime in March. Now, in some cases, a lot of times businesses get behind in terms of when they do the reconciliations and they might do multiple reconciliations at, you know, at a time. So now I didn't do one for January. I've got to do February. And that's what we're going to do in our practice problem here.